What's good, Gacha Gang? Kawaii 5 with another FGO video here to talk about a man who is truly, truly. That's right, the evilest man in the world, James Moriarty. Deck. Stats, command codes, craft essences, allies, the whole shebang. We're going over everything that you may need to make the Archer of Shinjuku truly a standout on your team. So if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more additional content. Moriarty sports a quick Arts 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 Buster deck and a Buster type Noble Phantasm. Now, there's some important things to note in his stats. Let's take a look first at his NP per hit. At a 0.38%, Moriarty isn't really going to be generating a lot of Noble Phantasm unless you go really, really Arts heavy. The man can Arts Brave Chain, and his star absorption is large enough where you can get those stars to funnel into your Arts cards if need be. But just remember that Moriarty's NP generation is going to be inconsistent at best. If that Buster card ends up showing up with the other Arts cards, you are not going to see nearly as big a payoff as you would in an Arts Brave Chain. So try to tuck those cards towards the end of your chains if you don't think you're going to be able to hit the mother load on that. Looking at Moriarty's other stats, his max HP is fine at a serviceable 13,685, but his attack is truly where it's at on the higher end at 11,781, with more ways to increase it. And as we mentioned with Star Absorption, the man's an archer. He's going to be critting a lot. Moriarty's only passive worth noting is his passive critical strength boost, so let's instead move on to his active skills starting with the free shooter rank EX. This gives him one turn of ignore invincibility and increases his star gather rate by 300 to 600 percent and this is on a seven to five turn cooldown to be quite honest i'm not really sure why moriarty needed to get this skill he's already an archer so his star gather rate is going to be fairly high the ignore invincibility is honestly going to be the main draw of this skill that's what you're going to end up using the most I would honestly have traded the star gather rate for more turns of ignore invincibility, and I would have been just fine with this skill. With all that said, max this skill lasts, it's not nearly as important as Moriarty's other skills. So we're going to talk about the upgraded version of Moriarty's second skill because not only does it cast him in a far better light, but it's important to future proof. End of the Spider's Web rank A++ can only be used with 10 critical stars or more. But unlike the unupgraded version of this skill, it doesn't consume those stars upon activation. You just need those stars in order to activate the skill. This is going to give Moriarty an NP steroid of 30 to 50% depending on level and increases NP strength by 20% for three turns. So you can activate this early and get a little bit of extra leeway. What is most important is the fact that this gives your allies the evil alignment. So if you have someone on your team who isn't evil themselves, say Merlin, for example, you can make them evil and allow them to benefit from any and all skills that target allies of the evil alignment for a short period of time. And that's something we're going to go into more when we look over potential allies for Moriarty. Regardless of how you're using this skill, at the bare minimum, the NP steroid is very important. So max this first. And Moriarty's final skill is Evil Charisma rank A. This gives all allies a 10 to 20% attack boost, but also increases the attack of all evil allies except for Moriarty by an additional 10 to 20%. So you could be looking at a total 40% attack boost on some of your allies. Definitely go ahead and max this skill second, mainly because it's just a general attack boost and whether Moriarty is attacking or being some sort of pseudo evil supporter off damage dealer that he's kind of weird at being, the skill's still going to help. Moriarty's Noble Phantasm is the dynamics of an asteroid. This deals 600 to 1000% damage to a single enemy and also grants a defense debuff of 20 to 40%. And as with all Noble Phantasm overcharge effects that are very, very good, 
This activates before the damage is dealt, so you are benefiting from that defense reduction while using the Noble Phantasm, as well as any subsequent cards you might use after from pretty much anybody. I would say depending on who Moriarty's allies are, you might want to end up slotting this either in the middle or at the very end, mainly because the defense decrease goes up the higher Moriarty's overcharge is. Since it activates before damage is dealt on top of that, you don't really have to worry about saving the effect for the end so another stronger Noble Phantasm can hit. If this is the Noble Phantasm you need to do the maximum amount of damage, well, it's gonna do it. When it comes to Moriarty's craft essences, we are going to want a focus on Noble Phantasm damage more than anything. A lot of Moriarty's bonuses are stacked into his Noble Phantasm, so we want to try and focus on that if we can. I know a lot of people out there have recommended Buster Effectiveness Cs for him, and while those can be good, I tend to shy away from them more than anything, mainly because he's only got one Buster card in his deck. So you're mainly trying to buff the Noble Phantasm with those cards anyways, why don't we just go ahead and focus on the Noble Phantasm damage and other aspects of Moriarty's kit instead. That being said, Hero Ellie's Adventure still remains a very powerful choice. The Buster Card effectiveness boost and NP strength are both going to go a long way to making the dynamics of an asteroid more powerful. Another freebie option I think really works for Moriarty is the classic three great heroes, granting NP damage, critical star drop rate, and a starting NP gauge. The critical star drop rate isn't really the main star here, no pun intended, but the NP damage as well as the starting NP gauge are going to help Moriarty Noble Phantasm both more quickly and with a lot more force. You got a Merlin on your team, and he's pretty much set if you leveled up his second skill. Bitter and Sweet can be another valuable choice for him. I know some of you JP players are watching at the time of this video. This not only provides NP strength, but also provides Moriarty with two instances of invincibility. If you remember, we were looking through his skills, Moriarty really has no way to mitigate damage on his own. He needs to rely on support for that. So giving him a craft essence that can help with that can help give your support a little bit of a break. Blue Illusion, however, ends up pushing things in a completely opposite direction. This does grant NP strength, but it also permanently gives Moriarty Ignore Invincibility. He does get it from a skill, but that only lasts one turn, and there may be multiple turns in a challenge quest where Moriarty's your main source of damage, but the enemy just keeps using an invincibility skill. Well, this craft essence will turn that skill into all but useless, while boosting Moriarty's Noble Phantasm to boot. And finally, I am the owner of a Max Limit Broken Black Grail, and I will continue to advocate for it. That 500 HP per turn is more than a fair price to pay for plus 80% NP strength. I, I don't really need to say more than that. When it came to picking some allies for Moriarty, I wanted to see who could benefit most from his power of evil. But then I also remembered that Moriarty can turn any servant evil temporarily to gain benefits from his own personal effect, so I wanted to look for other ways to play off that, and that's sort of what's led to these five recommendations I got for you. To start with, our first freebie pick is Hassan of the Cursed Arm. And Hassan of the Cursed Arm is mainly here, one, because he's free, two, because he benefits from Moriarty's evil boosting powers, but... Also three, because he is able to generate 15 critical stars on command. And because he can generate 15 critical stars on command and another 15 on the next turn, that means he is in a great position to provide critical star support to Moriarty in a pinch so he can always have the stars necessary to activate his most important skill. Our second freebie option is gonna be Grey, and I mainly put her on this list for her Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm has the ability to decrease Buster Resist for all enemies. So, not only is Grey an Assassin able to provide some bonus stars to Moriarty from the fact that she's an Assassin, but she can also decrease an enemy's Buster Resist by using her Noble Phantasm, say, second in a chain, and then Moriarty can go ahead and follow up with his third, which gets defense reduction before it deals the damage, leading to some pretty impressive returns. 
For the third recommendation, I had to go with Summer Abigail. Summer Abigail is an absolutely absurd servant. And while Moriarty is able to provide her with attack bonuses, pairing her and Moriarty together can lead to some crazy stuff happening. Abby can decrease enemy buster resist, remove tons of buffs from enemies through both her Noble Phantasm as well as some of her skills. She's got so many instances of defense reduction, it is absolutely absurd. So we can tack all those together and then tack Moriarty's Noble Phantasm on top of it and you are going to have a tag team from hell. Speaking of the tag team from hell, Ashia freaking Doman. Moriarty may have been the king of evil allies at one point, but Doman has come in and absolutely eaten that title from him. Because Doman grants Moriarty what Moriarty grants everyone else, only he does it even better. He's got attack boosts for evil and chaotic, critical strength boosts for evil and chaotic. And what is Moriarty? Moriarty is chaotic evil, so he can get the full gamut of Ashia Doman's buffs. Plus, Doman is an alter ego, so even though he's not going to deal as much damage to Saber, Archer, and Lancer classes, he's gonna take neutral damage from them, so he'll be able to survive on your team fairly well. And our final ally is Amakusa Shiro, who after his recent rank up quest has just gotten absolutely absurd. This man has received three rank ups on FGO. He is not going anywhere. And this extra rank up is actually the main reason I want to pair him with Moriarty. Decreasing the buster resist of all enemies for five turns is going to do wonders towards supporting Moriarty's overall damage. And his upgraded revelation skill, Prayer for a Long Journey, rank A, well, if you've got that to max rank people, that's going to be 10 critical stars every turn for three turns. And that's targeted for an ally. So you can basically make it so Moriarty can fund his own stars for his second skill, as well as increase his overall NP gain. Amakusa is just the complete package. I'm so, so glad I pulled one on the first banner he came out on. Moriarty's command codes were honestly a simple matter to put together. I wanted to mainly focus on upping the damage of his overall cards and his Noble Phantasm. Just go full on into damage since that seems to be the best way to do it for him. So to start with, I want to definitely recommend Da Vinci Chan. This grants Moriarty NP damage up by 15% for one turn when attacking using the engraved card. This does has to be used before you use the Noble Phantasm, so this is honestly a good throwaway. If you really, really like Moriarty, you can go ahead and chuck this on his Buster card, use it before the Noble Phantasm, and you're gonna see some very impressive damage. Moriarty's mainly gonna be hitting enemies with his three Arts cards, so focusing on Star Absorption to pump up your Noble Phantasm gain, as well as just overall critical damage to make the cards deal more damage really seems to be the way to go. Immature Illusionary Command Seal is always an excellent pick for an Arts card, increasing Star Absorption by 100%. Any Star Absorption Command Code works, this is just the best. If you're looking to mainly focus on upping Moriarty's damage against the Saber class though, you can give him Star Eradicating Wicked Holy Sword. This increases the critical damage of a card against Saber enemies by 25%. Since you're probably bringing Moriarty to fight some sort of saber, this is gonna hurt. And if you're looking to just overall up general critical damage, Lady of the Red Jewels Command Seal has been one I've been using on Summer BB to great effect. This increases the critical damage of the engraved card by 10%. A simple buff and an effective one. Overall, my friends, James Moriarty is a servant that has gotten better over time. Aged like a fine wine. However, that wine still needs a couple more years in the barrel in order to blossom to its full potential. The main reason I say this is because his first skill, it might as well not even be there. It doesn't really do much for them. It really needs some sort of rank up bonus attached to it. However, there is a lot of fun you can gather out of Moriarty's gimmicks attached to his second and third skill. The evil effect leaves 
quite a bit for players to play around with and the fact that you can make any ally evil really opens up a lot of fun team combinations like what i mentioned with ashio domen and moriarty's noble phantasm is just straight up good it's just a great noble phantasm there is really nothing bad to say about it though i would recommend getting it up to np2 if you are super super serious about it i know that's a lot to say in a game that has one percent rates but np2 is really where this noble phantasm starts to shine overall moriarty he's okay just okay but I want to know what you all think, so go ahead and let me know your thoughts about James Moriarty down in the comment section below. Command codes, craft essences, allies, whatever you're using, did you pull him on a banner that was up recently? Let me know that so I can go ahead and celebrate with you. It's always nice to talk with the community. And speaking of talking, if you want to talk more about video games, my Discord server is of course open. There's a link down in the description below. If you think I'm doing a good job, you can hit me up on Patreon. Massive thank you to all those patrons who give every month, even though I know y'all don't have to. And speaking of Twitch, well, my internet situation got resolved, so expect a Twitch schedule up on the community tab of the YouTube at the second this video is done, honestly. It's going to be up before that. You can find that on my Twitter, of course, as well. This is Kawaii50, hoping you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next video.